So in this video, we'll be looking at how we put in our ground floor, uh, we'll be looking at our foundation, and we'll also be looking at the topography as well. So to start off with, we'll put our ground floor in. To do that, uh, we need to be on the ground floor view, as we can see we are here. And in the architecture tab, I can come along and I can see I've got uh, floor. So if just click on floor. With this, go into the properties box. Uh, at the top there, I can select this top one, which is the ground bearing slab. Uh, with that one selected, um, I can now use pick walls, which is the default setting uh, in Revit. And with pick walls, uh, just on the inside of the wall there, just select uh, the inside of the wall and you can see where that pink line comes to. And you can do the same on all of the walls. Just pick the inside of the wall and that's where that gr uh, pink line uh, joins up all the way around. It's really important that that's, that's a continuous uh, line all the way around. If it's not, it won't let you finish. To finish that drawing, green tick in the middle at the top, and that finishes off that drawing mode. And then we can see we've got our, our plan view and the floor is actually highlighted blue. Uh, just click in a white space outside to get rid of that, and then go into my 3D view. And again, I can scroll and have a look around, uh, and I can see that I've got my floor in there. Now, to uh, drop our walls down into our foundation, uh, I need to be able to highlight all the walls so for that i can just hover my mouse over uh, one of the walls but don't click anything uh, with that turned blue the outline of it turned blue use the tab key once on your keyboard and then left click and all that is without moving our mouse around uh, all the walls are now selected on the left hand side here I've got my base offset so click into there and i'm going to be putting a minus figure so i'm going to be a minus and then however deep hold my foundations to go uh, for the purposes of this drawing, I'm going to choose, I don't know, 1500 or 1 1.5 meters. Uh, and then once I've done that, when I click apply, you can see them drop down. So these now walls have now dropped down below um, my, my floor by one and a half meters. Um, so now I need to be putting my foundation uh, on the underside of these walls. Uh, to do that, we go into a ground floor view again. And for this, we're not in Architecture tab, but we're going to be using the Structure tab. So when I open up Structure tab, I can come along and see Foundation. I'm going to be choosing the Wall Foundation, which just basically puts a strip foundation on it. Uh, as you can see, when I hover over the wall, it goes blue. And you'll always get this dialog box down the right-hand side. Just ignore that. Um, but just go around and click each wall that you want to have a foundation on, like so. Once you've got a foundation on it, you can see the walls no longer turn blue. Get rid of that dialog box down there, don't need that. And again, if I go back to my 3D view, I can now see I've got these uh, foundations uh, sitting on the underside of my walls. Uh, with that done, I now need to be looking at putting the topography in. Uh, so to do that, I need to be in our site view. So we haven't got that open at the top here in our uh, tabs. So in my project browser, um, down here, you can see I've got site view, just double click on that and it brings open my site view. Uh, the first job is to put in our perimeter. So to do that at the top here, so we were in structure as our tab, we're now gonna come along and we're gonna be using massing and site. So we click into there. And the first thing I wanna do is lay out my property line. So this is my property line. So this will be my boundary. You'll always get this dialog box and I like to do mine to uh, create it by sketching uh, because then I can just literally place a, uh, a click there Click again over there, click down that way, and I can physically draw it in. You'll notice it does snap to a grid as well, so it helps you link everything together. Once that's done, green tick, and then you see dotted lines. Uh, we'll just cancel that, we don't need to save just yet. Uh, so with that done, you can see I've got this property line, and I can adjust this as well later dates. So if I just click on there, I can then edit my sketch, and I'm back into this drawing mode again. So if I need to move things around or maybe want to move this one out a little bit more, just grab it and drag it. And you can see that it always stays linked together. Uh, green tick again to come back out of that. Now to put my topography in, again, I go back to massing and site and then Revit call it topo surface. So we go into there. Once I'm in there, automatically place point is selected. And that's what we want to be doing. We'll be placing points, one in each corner. Uh, and I need to be selecting my elevation. Um, so with our topography, uh, we need to have a minimum of 150 millimeters uh, below our DPC line. So into there, I'm going to be putting in a minus of 150. Uh, and it's really important I do that, and don't forget that. So that's once I've done that, I like to actually drop my points ever so slightly inside uh, 
uh, my boundary lines. And this is if I want to try and change something at a later date. If I put them right in the corner there, uh, at a later date, I'll have to, to uh, move the boundary line to, to get to these points. Um, put another one in there, scroll it, make it a bit quicker. Scroll back in, and another one there. And now we can see I've got, um, when I zoom out, all around the outside. With that done, just green tick, and I've now got my topography in there. If I go back to my 3D view, we can now see I've got um, the outside surface, and we can now see how it, our foundations lie within that. And that's how you put your uh, substructure together uh, for this particular project.